Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm going to tell you about painting latex items. So first of all, the main thing that you have to bear in mind when you're painting latex items is that the latex piece is flexible. Here's the uh, half life cast mask that I made last time, obviously it's rubber so it's flexible and you can wear it as a mask and you, if it was a full mask you'd be putting it on and off over your head so it would flex all the time. So it's very important that whatever you use to paint latex is actually a flexible paint. If you use normal car paint or most paints off the shelf are designed to set onto rigid surfaces so if you paint latex with them then you'll probably find as the mask or the item flexes the paint will crack off. There's quite a few methods of painting latex that you can research online. Lots of them involve using toxic things like rubber cement I also heard something about using naphtha, which is lighter fluid. Personally, I don't fancy doing airbrushing with lighter fluid. So today I'm going to show you about painting with non-toxic items, which is the way that I prefer to do it. The first thing to remember is that latex will stick to latex, even when it's dry. So you could just use latex to paint latex with. I've got some latex here, and I've also got some pigments, so you could colour it. You can also tint latex with acrylic paints. Liquitex acrylic paints are quite good because they remain slightly flexible after they're dry and if you mix it about 50-50 with latex then you can make quite a good latex paint. One of the issues is that latex with pigment in will darken as it dries. So when you mix up the white latex with blue for instance it will make quite a light blue but as it dries it will become much much darker. So sometimes it's hard to get the colours right. The other thing I've got on the table here are called stretchy paints stretchy with an eye and these are paints which are basically designed for painting latex and they're designed also for painting fabric and they'll stick quite a lot of foam and things like that. They come in 30ml bottles, I found these on eBay in the UK, come in nine colours including the metallic ones that we've got here in gold, silver and bronze. They seem to come in randomly sized bottles but they're all 30 millilitres. And these say that they're non-toxic washable and you can clean the brushes in water so basically they're water based which also means you can thin them with water for brushing with an airbrush washable means that you can wash the item you've made and paint it if you need to so if you make a mask and then it gets dirty you can wash it and the paints won't wash off even though they're actually water soluble which is quite useful the finish on those is quite glossy they come out a bit like a plastic coating you can always use a stipple brush or something else to try and bash up the surface so they're not too glossy use these painted on meat with a brush, they come with a handy point on them for painting directly on fabric or latex or you can paint them with a brush or as I say you can thin those with water and put them in an airbrush so now I'm going to go through the process of painting up the mask that we made last time using a variety of methods so what have we got on the workbench? first of all I've got the mask that I'm going to paint which I've attached to this polystyrene head I've just pinned it on with three pins just so it holds itself in place I've got a roll from the middle of some sellotape there just so I can prop it up and I can work on it without it rolling away. I've got three small paint brushes. I've also got one big paint brush. I've got a dish here which is um, actually the top of a plaster container for mixing up paints on and I've got a small plastic tool which is actually a sculpting tool for mixing them like an artist would on a palette. I've got uh, one bottle of blue latex pigment. I might pull out some other colours as well. I've also got some stretchy paints there in green, red, blue and black. Stretchy paints are water soluble so I've got a jar of water to rinse the brushes out in. I've also got some cotton wool, which apparently you find in the skincare section of your local supermarket. I've got some kitchen roll to wipe up any spills. I've also got um, my airbrush here and a small compressor to run it we can actually do some airbrushing with stretchy paints if we thin them with water. So we're going to paint this mask up as a zombie so the first thing I need to do is put some rotten flesh on. The way I'm going to do that is to use some, uh, some of this cotton wool here which I'm just going to tease out. Stick on. Now I've got a small pot of latex here which is actually white pigmented latex. It's the same, same batch of latex that we made the mask from which had some white pigment in. It's quite hard to pigment latex completely white because it dries a naturally a browny yellow. Um, so that's why it's an off-white. I didn't put quite enough pigment in, but we need it to be sort of a skin, skin colour anyway. So I've got some more of that white pigmented latex. And I'm just going to use a small brush. And uh, we're just going to stick down this cotton wool. 
with some latex. You can also experiment with maybe cotton balls. You can get some little cotton balls from an art shop. Maybe cut the ends off some cotton buds and use those. You could stick any other fabric down as well with latex. It'll all stick fast and it'll all stick to the existing latex. You'll notice this latex is a lot whiter than the latex that makes up the mask. That's because latex darkens, the pigment darkens when it dries. And latex generally dries a much darker colour than it does when it's in liquid form, whether you add pigments or not. Just going to stick a bit more down on the cheek there, and I think that's probably enough. So we need to leave that to dry. I'm going to leave the brush submerged in the latex, because otherwise it will dry out and the brush will be ruined. If I leave it in there it won't dry out, so I might have some hope of using it again. We'll just leave that for a few hours to dry out, and then we'll come on to the next part. So we've let that dry overnight. You can see the colour's gone much darker. It's still a bit lighter than the latex. Eventually it will darken, but in any case, now we're going to um, try and mix up some of these stretchy paints and paint some veins on it. Eventually we're going to cover those with latex. Latex is translucent, so they should appear like they're under the skin. So I've got some, uh, some red stretchy paints. They come in these handy dispensers so I can just squeeze out a little bit. I'll try and mix up purple from red and blue. And you need a tiny amount. There we go, that's probably enough. I'm going to use a small brush to start with and see if we can paint something on here that looks like veins under the skin. purple there, not sure how much it looks like veins, but anyway, you can uh, see what the idea is. And these paints will dry sort of um, quite glossy, and also of course flexible and stretchy so that, uh, so that as the mask flexes they don't crack off. That'll probably, uh, probably do it for now before I go too far and ruin it. I'll just leave those to dry and then we'll come back and we'll put a coat of latex over the top of them. It should be quite translucent and then they should look like they're under the skin. That's the idea anyway. So we let that dry for about an hour. It seems to be quite dry now. It's got a nice rubbery feel to it. And we're just going to uh, go over those veins with a bit of this latex that's still in the pot. Looks like the brush is still good because it's been submerged. I'm just going to go and uh, paint a little thin amount of that over there. There we go, so we'll leave that to dry out and um, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so those layers of latex have dried. <clears throat> Not sure how well that's come out. I think the one on the cheek looks okay, but the one on the head there looks like a five-year-old's done some scribble. Uh, but never mind, uh, basically the, the latex has gone kind of translucent. Perhaps it would have been better to paint a piece of string and stick it on and cover it with latex, so it had more three-dimensionality to it. Um, but anyway, I'm going to continue as it is. Next thing I'm going to do is add some colour to all of this. Um, since zombies are dead, I'm going to make it blue, and I've got some latex here that I've popped some of the blue pigment into. I've already had white pigment in, it's the same batch of latex and I've just added some blue and I've dried a few spots on a piece of paper to see what the dried colour is because it will darken as it dries. I'm also going to use this nice brush I had at the beginning. I've since found one that I've used for latex before which has already got bits of latex stuck in it. I'm going to do a stipple effect all over to give it some texture so it's not just completely blue. I'm just going to do that by uh, going all over it with the edge of the brush. Hopefully we can bring a bit of colour to it and uh, give it a bit of a blue rinse. So here we go, I'm just going to get the excess off the brush on this lid that I've got here. And I'm just literally going to attempt to spread this all over it. It's a bit heavy there, so I'm going to try and spread what I've got on the brush. Work that all over with 
over the edge end of the brush. Best thing to do with latex brushes is wash them out with soapy water. Should be able to get most of it out so you can at least use them again, but as you can see from that brush it's fairly ruined. So that layer in itself, because it's latex, is going to come out quite translucent as well. So we should hopefully find the veins, even though you can't see them that well now, they should come back through the skin. So I'll let that dry, and the next thing, there we go, we can see latex stuck in the end of the brush. The next thing is going to be to come back and highlight some colours with an airbrush. Some thin stretchy paint, so we'll do some colour around the lips, and also where we did this rotten flesh effect, we'll come back and do some red and some blue there, and probably some black as well, and some of the details to highlight the creases. Okay, so that's had time to dry now. Hasn't gone quite as dark as I thought it would, probably because of the white pigments in there. But we can see the blue's all dry, and it's giving us a nice blue tint to the zombie, or whatever it is that we're making. So. Next thing is I've got the airbrush. I've got some red stretchy paint in there that I've cut with water. I'm just going to put some red detail on the rotten flesh there, probably a bit round the eyes and the mouth, so we'll see how that works out. have gone on quite nicely there. I'm just going to do some around the eyes here. Just a bit of shading. Well I've got some red in the airbrush I'm just going to do a little bit of light shading around the edges there. There we go, I think that'll do for the red. That's made quite a bit of difference to it, as we can see. Um, next thing is going to come back with a bit of black to do some details. Um, maybe another colour, which I'll have a think about. Right, I've got some black stretchy paint mixed with water in the airbrush now. I'm just going to continue to detail things up. Um, put some black into some of the details so we can see the lumps and bumps a bit better. Put the eyebrow back on as well. I think zombies have eyebrows anyway, so that's probably okay. Just going to continue uh, all over with this black now, just to pick up the details in the mouth and the nose and wherever else. I'll just carry on and see what happens. carry on with some different colours, but uh, I think that looks enough like a zombie for now anyway. And there we go.